Hi everybody, Happy New Year. I'm Jen, one of the mentors here on the Sunlight app. And today we're talking about fostering independence. Um, how to get these little creatures from being completely, totally dependent on us to being fully functional, independent humans. Um, and doing it day to day because when we homeschool, we are with our kids every single step of the way. So, as we go back to, um, as we go back to schooling after a holiday break or starting a new year, depending on what your schedule is, um, you know, thinking about how much they should be doing alone and what they should still need us for is a big question. And I've gotten several, um, questions about this from, uh, new members recently. So I thought I would just come on and talk for a few minutes about independence. Obviously, when we start doing anything, homeschooling included, kids are not going to be independent. And that is 100% okay. Um, there is no way to expect a very little person to just know what they're doing and do it without you. Um, you know, they don't walk through the parking lot alone. They don't get dressed alone. They don't brush their teeth alone. For sure, they're not going to do school alone. Totally normal. Sounds great. Makes sense. Uh, but somewhere along the line, they have to get independent, right? Uh, I homeschooled all four of my kids all the way through um, to all the way through middle school. Some of them through all the way through high school. Um, and here's how it kind of went. They need us for everything. And some kids literally will not do a lick of schoolwork unless you are sitting there paying attention to nothing else. We know those people. Um, what I ended up doing with my little, little like early elementary, first, second, third graders was saying, oh my gosh, I need to go to the bathroom, do the next math problem while I'm gone and I'll look at it when, you, when I get back. So one question at a time, not a page, not the whole day, one question. Just, can you do six minus four while I'm gone? I'll be back in 42 seconds. Um, and then we moved on to like, I'm right here. I'm gonna unload the dishwasher. Um, can you work on your math? Like if you have any questions, I'm right here. I'm still paying attention to you. Um, these things did not happen all at once in one day. Sometimes it takes a while for that to be the routine, that even if mom is outside of your reach, you can still read a page, do a math problem, spell a word, whatever. Um, and depending on the kid that you have, this can take a while. Like this can be a whole year of progress. Um, just the idea that they can do it. And here's why. I mean, this is in my experience. The reason is they have to be capable of it. Like if we ask kids to do something they're not capable of, they're not gonna do it because they can't. Equally, they have to think they can. So if they don't have the self-confidence to do school even a tiny bit without you sitting right there, they're not going to believe they can. So we kind of have to build them up and let them try. And I don't even care if you get the math problem right or not while I'm in the bathroom. Um, but if you'll just do it, if you'll just make the attempt and just sit and focus for 42 seconds without me, that's really the goal. So eventually they all get there. Um, interesting little observation in my house, your mileage may vary. Um, I had kids who could do one thing independently but not necessarily another. Like they could do a math problem independently or they could copy some spelling words independently, but like any kind of creative writing that they had to generate would not happen without me sitting there. Um, science was also another hard one. Like maybe you could read part of a chapter book while I was unloading the dishwasher, but like science was mom intensive for a really long time. Um, this gets more intense at the beginning of the school year, after a break. And I think that it points back to that self-confidence um, part that they really have to believe they can. Um, 
even to just do a tiny bit without you. And being in a routine really helps that. So if being in the routine of, you know, we're going to do some school at this time of day, the baby is going to wake up. So you're going to read while I just go get the baby. I'll be gone about four minutes. You just read while I'm gone. And then when I come back, you can tell me what you were reading about. If that's the routine, it goes easier. If that's not the routine, that's a a lot to ask of a kid for some kids at some ages. Um, I had a question too about scribing, like when should they be able to write independently? And I think the answer to that question varies wildly. I had a kid who was like, mom, I'll do it myself. Really, I got it. Even though it was slow, she just was going to write it herself. That was part of her deal. Um, I had another one who didn't enjoy the physical process of picking up a pencil and writing. And so for me to get very many words out of him at all, I had to write it down. He could have ideas and talk and create, but like the physical act of writing ruined it. Um, eventually what I did was I taught him to type. And I let him type and he would, he could type faster and I guess more easily than he could write. And so that went really well, but the, you know, the writing killed the creativity for him. And I don't think that's unusual. Um, I didn't see it in every kid, but I hear it from a lot of people um, that they have the same experience. Um, another question that I had is about reading comprehension and reading independence. Of course, in the younger years, of sunlight, we read all day to our kids. I mean, like we, if it has to be read, we read it. And as moms, we are in on all the reading and we know what they're reading about and we understand the characters and the story and the history and the timeline and all the things, which is, I mean, for me, part of the joy of sunlight is that I love all that stuff. I love reading to my kids. Um, I love knowing what they're reading about. I love reading the stories and getting into the characters and, you know, talking about what we think or predicting what comes next. Like, that's really fun for me. That's the great part of homeschooling. So as the kids get older and get independent, or as you get more kids, or as you get busier and you just can't keep up with everybody and all their reading all the time every day, um, you know, I had to start giving a kid a book and being like, let me know what happens. Let me know how it goes. We're going to talk about it soon. Um, and I tried at the beginning to pre-read everything my oldest read. And I did pretty well, but eventually <sighs> I couldn't keep up. And, you know, I was homeschooling with younger kids also, and all my kids were doing separate things because they're like four years apart and, 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 and new babies, medical things, sickness, moving, you name it. Um, and so I had to turn to my IG and get real serious about like letting my IG be my partner. And so in, and when we had to discuss a book that I had not read, I had to go to the IG, go to the summary of the book and say, okay, this is this book about here's this guy and here's his problem. Um, the vocabulary is in there. Hey, did when this came up, did you know what this word meant? Um, and then there's really a couple of kinds of questions um, in the instructor's guide for all the literature, all the way through, even through high school. Um, there are right answer questions. You know, where did Penny go after she went to the bank? Um, where does this story take place? What year was the turtle born in? Whatever. And I used those questions to kind of make sure the kids were comprehending what they're reading when I couldn't read with them. And then there are open-ended questions in the IG. What did you think about? What should she have done? Do you have an opinion kind of questions? And for those questions, I ended up asking, um, asking the kids a lot of questions like, hey, so tell me about the part of the story where XYZ happened, where they went to the river. Um, like what happened right before that? How did that go? Why did they go there? And then I kind of set them up in remembering that part of the story to then ask the instructor's guide question. So what do you think, you know, he should have done? Um, and, and it's not so much that I was looking for a correct answer as I was looking for, are they engaged in the story? Do they know what's going on? Does it follow? 
The magic part for me happened about kid three, <laughs> because like I said, my kids are all kind of spread out. And so they didn't do like HBLs together. They were just too far apart in age. And so by the time I got to my third one, I had pre-read all of the, you know, books for like, call it middle school. But it was like eight years ago. And so I didn't always remember which book this was. And once you said, oh, it's the one about, you know, the kid who has to go and climb over the wall and, you know, find the duck. And oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. But a lot of times I had to say, okay, so remind me, which book is this? This is about which guy? And then what happened? And, and kind of in the course of reminding me which book, which story, which characters we were talking about, the kids learn to answer these very basic questions about any book, which is to say, you know, who are we talking about? What is their problem? And then tell me the steps for how does it end up? And so um, those conversations w between me and a, a independently reading child and the instructor's guide um, really helped us to foster their reading independence with me kind of coming along side and coaching and just checking for engagement, checking for comprehension, you know, keeping kind of tabs on, are they handling the vocabulary? Do we need to focus more on the vocabulary? I had one who just, that was really easy. Um, I had another one who like, it really benefited us to go through some of those hard vocabulary words before reading be so that then when they came up in the book, he had some recall as to what they were. Um, so I will say the saddest part for me, homeschooling older kids and seeing them become um, in the young adults they're going to be and seeing them gain their independence and learn how to manage their own day and, you know, read by themselves and work by themselves is that I wasn't in on every single story, every single chapter um, every day. And that is, that's kind of a bummer. I mean, because that was the joy part for me in homeschooling, but we trade that for the joy of seeing our kids who we have raised and educated and, you know, and read to all the way from total dependence and watching them become the independent young adults that they're going to be. So that is my little spiel on they all will become independent sometime. Give them time. It's two steps forward, one step back. Every time you come back from a long break, every time we come back from a sickness, every time there's any sort of, you know, stress, they may get a little dependent again. Mom, I need you to sit with me. Mom, I need you to look at every single problem or every single sentence um, rather than just being able to go and do it kind of alone. Start tiny tiny one math problem one handwriting letter not one line not one page start with one f just do one f while i go to the bathroom and then i'll be right back i'm gonna fold laundry you do one f okay i'll look do one more f okay good that's kind of how we built up their independence eventually they will get there they all get there i promise they will all be um, independent and working and reading without you eventually, but it is going to take a while. It is a long-term project. So enjoy the joy of reading every single thing. And then as they get older, enjoy the joy of watching them become the independent people that we all know they're going to be. So if you have any more questions or if there's something else I can address, drop a comment um, under here and I will see you soon. Happy new year, everybody.